Have you ever had a coding project where you develop some features and you have the project doing what you want it to have, but then you're still not proud of it, there's still some things that in there that make it look amateurish, and you also don't know what would make this code really look professional. When I graduated from university, I thought I was a really good programmer because I could make things work. And then I went into my first job and I started making contributions to the code there. And when I would make these contributions, the interesting thing is my contributions would actually fix the bugs and it would actually develop some new features and meet all the specifications that they asked me to do for my task. But the interesting thing is no matter what I did, no matter how hard I worked, I would always get these code review comments from the senior devs and they would point out all these flaws in my code. And basically I had a lot of bad coding practice and all these small things that would make my code a lot better. And so that's when I realized the difference between amateur code and professional code. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I learned and then give you an example that we can go through. We'll look at some code together and then I'm gonna show you how it's amateurish and then we're gonna make it more professional looking. So let's get started. My name's Henrik and I've spent the past 13 plus years in software engineering and today I help software engineers who feel stuck and overwhelmed with the growing tech industry and help them build the core foundational skills that they need to stay relevant heading into the future. Before we begin, I'd like to share about my free guide, my high IQ software checklist guide. And it's a checklist tool that you can use with your code bases to ensure that it's following high IQ software standards and practices. You can download it in the link in the description. All right, so we have some amateur code here and we're gonna fix it over time to make it look more professional. And so I'm gonna share with you three architectural shifts that you should follow when you wanna make your code look better. All right, the first shift that I want you to understand is that it's better to be readable than clever. A lot of times I've seen over the years is people would do this kind of thing and this looks kind of clever. It's basically a bunch of if conditions all scram scrambled up together into this one line of code and it can look kind of clever and fancy, but what happens is that it becomes hard to read. And especially for other developers who are working on the same code base as you, you don't want other people to stress out about this line of code. So what, what is this line of code doing anyways? So what this is doing is that it has a condition and then the question mark, and then the value if it's true, if this condition is true, and then the value if it's false. So in this case, basically what it's doing is if the len is less than zero, this variable len, if the user inputs a len, a length that is less than zero, then it will be negative one. This, it will return negative one. But if not, then it's going to do another if condition and then it's going to check the length here. If it's greater than 128, then it's going to return zero here. And so basically it's just some if conditions put together but it's really hard to read. And so it's better to just write out the whole if and else conditions. It's not as fancy or clever, but let's do this. So really what it is doing is there's an if here, that's the if condition. And then if it is true, then we're going to return one. So status will be one. And then else, there's another if condition here. And then it was going to return zero if that is true. Zero here and then else. So here's the more fleshed out version of that line of code. Of course, it takes more lines of code, but it's a lot easier to read. You can also do it like this, if, else, if, else. But you can see it's readily understandable if you just code it like this. This is just one example, but this is the main idea. You want to make sure your code is readable because even if maybe you're the only one working on the code, think about three months from now, if you come back to your code in the, in the future, will you be able to understand this line of code really fast? I think everyone can agree that if we were to look at our code three months from now, this would be a lot easier to understand. You want people to be able to read your code as if they were reading a book, not trying to decode or decrypt some sort of cipher. Another thing you can do to support readability is if your code is still hard to understand just by looking at it, maybe you can add some code comments. I know that's helped me a lot in the past when I've looked at our code bases at my company. Some developer from the past would add a simple line of a simple code comment and I would be able to have more clue what's going on. All right, the second architectural shift that will make your code look more professional and that is to structure your code for change. And what I mean by that is you want to structure it in such a way that it's easily changeable or easily upgradable. 
you have to keep in mind that your code will probably go through different versions. And so, for example, in this code here, you can see that there's a lot of what we call magic numbers. And that is, there's a hard-coded number 0 here, negative 1, and 128. And if we scroll down some more, there is a 10 in here. And so what we do in our code is we don't have these magic numbers. We actually create a pound define. We create some constants. We do pound define. And then here it says len greater than 128. 128 is basically the max length. So what we do is define and then we do max, max len 128. And then what we do is we put this here. And then we put it here. And then we put it here. And the reason why this is so important is because say you upgrade your code and then you change the max length to be maybe double that, maybe like 256. And so what happens is you look for the 128 and you think that you only need to change this line of code here, but you didn't realize that there's actually another 128 in other parts of your code. Now it's really simple to see it here in this line of in this file. But if you have a code base with multiple files that's dependent on that 128 number, then you only update this one, but then some other part of your code will, the if condition here will return true in that case. Like if you have 129, it's going to go in here, but it's the input is not too large yet. It's actually still less than the max length. And then over here, if your character array didn't get upgraded, maybe it was still at 128, but you, you had modified this one to 256. And then you think that's all you need to do, but then your array is not going to be able to hold enough length for whatever input's going to be put in there. So it's easier, it's a lot better to have a one pound defined constant called max len, and then you use that everywhere. So that when you want to upgrade your code or you want to change your code, you want to change the max length, you, you can just change one line of code here and then it applies to your code everywhere else. Another way you can structure your code for change is to make it more modular. And so if you want to upgrade just one, one part of your code, then you can just upgrade that one module and then everything is fine. As long as it's inputting and outputting in the right formats, then everything's going to be good. And so you can easily upgrade your code that way. And so that's how you can structure your code for change. Okay, the third architectural point that will make your code look more professional is consistency is the standard. So make sure that you're consistent. And in this case, we want to make sure we're consistent with our naming conventions. And so here we have a nice variable called sensor reading. And this kind of gets into the readability point that I was mentioning earlier. But we have some lazy variables like len. And then if you go up here, we have b. And what, what are those? So we want to be consistent and we want to make sure that the variable names are also the way that the the convention we're using for naming the variables is also consistent. I've seen a lot of times in my code, even at my company, there would be a snake case here, but then other people would be doing camel case like this. So in our code, we would have one person doing snake case and another person doing camel case. And then sometimes in our code, we would have one person doing their if condition like this, and then someone would be doing their if condition like that. And so that's not very professional. So what I do a lot in my code bases is I try to make sure everything is consistent. It's not going to affect the code functionality, but if you want to be professional, you want to make sure all everything is consistent, like the way the coding conventions are consistent. You want to make sure they're consistent. So let's do the stick to snake case here. So we'll do input length here, input length here, input length here. And this also adds to the readability of the code. It makes it more readable. And also here, there's B here. This is actually what input buffer. So we want to make sure we're using snake, uh, snake case there and make sure that we're naming all of our variables and make it easy to read. Something I want to add to is that I personally like doing my if statements like this. But if I see all the developers in my team, they like doing their if condition like this. I want to stay consistent to my team's coding conventions. So what I do nowadays is I make sure it's like this also, even though I don't prefer it that way. Uh, I, I will do it that way so that when my team looks at the code, everything is nice and consistent and everyone can read the code um, really well. 
A neat goal you can strive for is to make sure that the code base looks like it was written by one person, even though it was written by 50 different people, even though 15 different people were contributing to the code, make sure it looks like it was written by one person. In that way, you can make the code more uniform and it's easier to read. And when future developers come on the project, they can look at the code and follow the coding conventions, and then it will be easy for them to jump on the project also. All right, let's look at this code once more before we conclude and everything's looking good, nice and simple. So those are the three architectural shifts that you wanna to have to make your code look more professional instead of amateurish. So the first one is readability is more important than being clever. Make sure your code is readable and easy to understand by other people, other developers, even yourself in the future. Make sure you can read it too and make it easy so that you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's going on. And then the second one is structure your code for change, make it easy to upgrade. So that means making it more modular and also using constants where you need to. And then the third one is making sure that you're being consistent. So consistency is a standard, make sure the code looks nice and uniform and so that other people can look at it and easily follow along what's going on. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to make sure your code is following some high IQ software coding standards, you can download my high IQ software checklist. It's a free PDF checklist guide you can use to do a quick audit on your code and make sure it's not missing anything and make sure that it looks good and professional. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out and gave you some ideas on how you can make your code look more professional. And if you want to watch another video about how to make your code look more professional, you can watch this video over here and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.